Hi, I'm Dwight from Good Sounds. This is the 11th instructional video in a multi-part series dealing with theatrical sound production. Today, we're going to discuss performing a mic check and when those need to happen. If you have followed our videos up to this point, then you have invested some time and effort in preparing to run sound for your show. You will have done a lot of work to get your script ready, set up a proper sound system, set up your mixer and prepare your wireless microphones. You've developed a process to get actors mic'd and to ensure that those microphones will be safe and secure. It's now time to get those actors on stage for that first rehearsal and get that critically important first mic check. It is a great idea to arrange with the director ahead of time that the first rehearsal will include a thorough mic check. If you need to plan your schedule so that actors get mic'd earlier, then do so. Getting a complete mic check on that first night will mean that the rest of the week will be infinitely easier. The first tech rehearsal tends to be a little chaotic anyway, so adding an extra 15 minutes or so onto the miking process won't be a huge deal especially when you explain to the director that it will save you countless amounts of time the rest of the week. But with setting your gain structure and EQing for a more natural sound in advance, this mic check won't be nearly that difficult. Now, I will mention a phenomenon that occurs with nearly every show we do, and to this day, I still can't explain it. Normally, you can't get actors to stop talking, no matter what you do except when you put a microphone on them. Have them stand on stage to give a mic check and they suddenly lose their ability to speak. They think saying a few words is sufficient for you to do everything you need to do to make them sound wonderful. And then it's silence. Do yourself a favor and have a script on stage ready for the actors to use so they can give you enough dialogue to appropriately adjust their channel. Explain to them in advance that sound is essential in getting a proper mic check and they need to continue speaking until they're told to stop. I don't like to have them just ramble on about nonsense or repeat the Pledge of Allegiance because this is not going to be representative of how they're going to speak during the performance. They will tend to not project and just speak in a monotone voice. Have them repeat lines that they will have in the show the way they will do them in the show and if necessary, just repeat those lines over and over until you're done with your check. You should have set your gain structure and some EQ prior to this point, and that will help tremendously. But as I would mentioned in earlier videos, it will need to be adjusted with each new voice. Pull all of the channel faders down completely before you start. This is also a great way to know exactly who has been checked and who hasn't. When you're ready to check a mic, you will bring their fader back to unity. Anyone's fader that is still down hasn't been checked, and any fader that is at unity has been checked. It's a good tip to practice every time you're checking mics. Begin with the first actor, having them present their lines. Bring their fader up to unity, but turn down the gain just a bit. Unmute the channel to begin producing sound. Continue turning up the gain. If you're getting more sound than you could ever use without getting any feedback, great. Just back off the gain to a comfortable volume level and you're done. Listen for the natural sound that we discussed earlier and make any adjustments to those critical frequency ranges that we identified. Typically the range from 200 hertz to 450 hertz and from 3000 hertz to 5000 hertz. If you are happy with the sound, and comfortable that the volume is appropriate, you're done, don't mess with it. However, you may experience some instances where bringing up the gain during the check will result in feedback. Now you have some work to do, and this can get a little difficult to correct. But keep this in mind, during a show, you want to be able to unmute your mic channels with confidence and be assured that you will not have any volume or feedback issues. The middle of scene two, when you unmute channel seven for the first time, is not when you want to find out how loud you can get or whether or not it's going to squeal. This first check is the best opportunity you have in a controlled environment where you can correct any issues that could arise during the show. If you are experiencing some feedback, 
but haven't really succeeded in getting the volume that you know you will need, you have to be able to identify the frequency or frequencies that are causing the feedback and try to drop their volume. Now, being able to recognize specific frequencies by ear is a talent that can take years to achieve, while others have a gift of perfect pitch and can recognize them immediately. However, even though you may not fit into either of these categories, you can still fix the problem with a little bit of trial and error. And the good news is that once you have corrected one microphone, it is very likely that any feedback you will experience with other mic checks will result in the same or nearly the same frequencies needing to be adjusted. Once you have reached the point where the microphone is creating feedback, try to identify whether the sound is sort of low sounding or high sounding. This will help to determine what knobs you will need to use to make the adjustments. If you think the sound is kind of low or low mid range, turn up the knob that adjusts the volume of your low mids. Then start to turn the frequency knob for that low mid range and see if the feedback gets worse. Once you reach a spot where the feedback increases, you know that that is the problem frequency, so you can now turn down the volume for that frequency and hopefully get rid of the feedback. This method doesn't require you to be able to identify frequencies by ear, but still allow you to find them and remove them. You can also do this for higher frequencies as well. Now, don't expect to be anyone's favorite person while this process is going on. People are going to complain a lot. But that's okay. You're doing what is necessary to help ensure that none of these issues ever occur during rehearsals and shows. And that is worth every complaint you get. Because when it's all said and done, you are going to be everyone's favorite sound guy. The first real mic check is always going to be the most difficult, but the rest of the week will continue to get easier and easier. From this point on, every night should take less and less time. It is very important that you perform a mic check before every rehearsal and every show. But eventually, it will amount to little more than just making sure the microphones are on and working properly. For shows, our mic checks probably take about 20 seconds or less per actor. But every so often we find some problem as simple as the microphone not being turned on, and that would probably not have been caught without a mic check. They are your last line of defense against any problems before that curtain goes up. Join us for our next video when we will talk about mixing your show and what you can do to make it easier. You can always check us out on Facebook or at GoodSoundDesign.com. If you have any questions regarding microphone checks or EQing, please let us know. And as always, thanks for joining us here at Good Sounds. And remember, if it can't be heard, it can't be good.